episode number 209. If you don't nurture your relationship with your spouse, you will end up divorced. You will. And your kids need to see you taking care of each other. And you need to have sex because that dopamine and that oxytocin and those cuddle hormones that are surging through your body make you happy. Welcome to the Be Real Show with Travis Too Tall and Hoff, where we talk about life, dreams, social media, and business. Well, hello and welcome to the Be Real Show with Travis Too Tall and Huff. Folks, I'm fired up today and you should be too because after this show, you might want to realize your relationship and the things in it as well as also just be bringing these positive energy and vibes that we have on our, on our line. And that's because we have our featured guest today, Jennifer Hurwitz. Jennifer, Hi. are you ready to be real? I'm so excited, Travis. You're awesome. Absolutely. <laughs> Jennifer is, Jennifer's the real deal, folks. Okay. <laughs> she's a best-selling author and, and uh, it's not just best-selling. She's on Oprah, some of Oprah's favorite lists of reading, folks. This is real deal. You go to her Instagram, you can check it out. It's unbelievable to check that out. She is also a podcast host herself as well as a speaker, and then most importantly, also a relationship coach. Uh, so Jennifer, we're just excited to have you on the show today. First off, how's your day going? My day's going good. It's, I mean, I think I'm a little bit later in my day than you because I'm in Charlotte and you're yes. out there in California. Yes. So good morning, Travis. How are good you? Good morning, good morning. Top of the morning to you. Absolutely. <laughs> Top of the morning. You're like all Monday energy. Like, this is going to be fun. <laughs> Absolutely. You know it. So my first question is to you is into what made you dive into relationship coaching? And oh my gosh. Help me solve these problems. Let's go back a little bit. Let's go back. Well, it's yeah. funny. I never, you know, you never wake up in the morning, get married, have two kids and think it's time for a divorce. That's, right. that's never what you think, right? But 52% right. um, of us end up that way. So mm -hmm. unfortunately or fortunately, whichever way you want to look at it and no judgment here, um, I woke up one day after 13, let me think, 12 and a half years of marriage and I ended up divorced. So I tell everybody, I took lemons, big, am I allowed to swear? I won't swear, but sure you big, can. Yeah, you I can. can swear. Okay. Big freaking fucking lemons. And I yes. made a career out of my disaster. Mm. Um, I made a career out of my divorce and I decided that I, I had to do something wow. um, because I was a stay at home mom for 13 years. I didn't even... Um, I didn't even know how to balance a checkbook. I, I really didn't. My, my ex and I, I call him my husband. Um, my husband and I are, thank God, amicable. We're best friends. He is my rock. We're, and that doesn't happen. It wow. very, very, very rarely happens. That so, does rarely happen. Rarely, right? But you have to work at it. You have to work at it. So just like you have to work at a happy, a happy marriage, you have to work at a happy divorce. Got um, you. So that's, that's kind of where I'm, where I'm sitting. So I kind of like to be able to take everything that I learned, um, all the mistakes I made, and I made millions of them, and that's why I wrote my books, kind of to help people either stay in a happy marriage or get out and be in a happy divorce. That's right. My yeah. That's my, yeah. There's no reason to be in misery. No. Oh, no. My God. Choose happy. Choose happy. Yeah. Make up every day and choose to be happy. So Absolutely. Even though maybe some people feel like they're disappointing a bunch of people. I mean, yeah. personally, folks, I'll be real with you. I've, I've been divorced. I, oh, I didn't know that. 20, 23 years old, 24 hard, years old, got married. And a few years later, just went through a lot of different stuff. So also realized, uh, you know, big part of marriage is family. And so okay. I, I, uh, things were going good until the recession hit and then money dried up. Next thing you know, I had, uh, my ex's, uh, whole family living in my house. And oh my God. Really? Created lots of different problems. Yes. Well, yes. That's my mother-in-law got that's divorced and just all sorts of fun things came along with that. And, uh, and at the end of the day, I just kept seeing myself. We w went to counseling and went all, the, you know, all the things you could possibly do to try to make this work. Good and then finally, I just looked at myself in the mirror one day and said, this isn't working, dude. And yep. you are going to be miserable doing the same thing here in this rabbit race. And, and there, and you know, a, a lot of times you can't point the finger at anyone, no. but the point no. is, it's like, you're not happy. No. And most importantly, you're young still. And yeah. secondly, lastly is is now or never because you know what you're just going to keep this thing going down forever or never or it's now and so right. and i and it, you know it's scary it is scary and it's, it's sometimes awful. tough to even say that you know yeah sometimes. well admitting it right to be able admitting to admit it yes look, this is this is not for me this is not working and you did your part and you tried to work it out and it didn't happen and you moved on and that's awesome right Absolutely. and look where you are now right greatest so, journey ever yes i mean right. it's it changed my life in many ways. There was some pain that went yeah. in that as well, obviously, reflection well, of course. And, and going through your own shit, you know, that yeah. you have to get through. Um, but I think that it's so important too. I'm curious into what give you the insider passion to writing the books because I think that helps people on a more scalable way Thank where they can you, pick yeah. up the book and yeah. 
That's why I did it. You know, the first one I tell people is one happy divorce, hold the bullshit. And that one was more for me. It was cathartic. It was kind of putting myself out there and saying, look, this is my journey. This is what happened to me. I didn't expect it. And it hit me in the face. And it was kind of like a death. You grieve. I didn't grieve the loss of my um, marriage per se, like the, you know, losing my, my husband. I lost, um, I was grieving the loss of my family. Mm-hmm. I don't think people realize that, you know, I, I don't want to get back together with my ex. Everyone's like, oh my God, you're in such best friends. Why don't you just get back together? No way. No, 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 right. no. I don't want that. What I miss is my family, right? Yeah. So that was my first book. And then my second book, uh, What a Coulda Shoulda, A Divorce Coach's Guide to Staying Married, mm. um, was just, look at y'all, marriage, I mean, divorce sucks. It absolutely sucks, but you don't understand it until you go through it, just like right. a death. You don't get it till you know it, until you've been there. Right. So I wanted to write a book through the lens of a divorce coach, um, through a lens of a divorced woman, to say to people who are not divorced, help us. Like, right. be there, help us, show up. Um, my family, your family, everyone's, you know, friends. I lost, it, it was just like the tragedy of it all was um, I never expected it to be as horrific as it was. Mm. And I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't gone through it, right? So Absolutely. I really hoped, Travis, that this book was going to help people, um, both if they were like contemplating getting divorced, to say, look, the grass isn't greener. Right. And then also to help people on the other side to say, look, it's okay. You can, you can be happy again. So yes. I think, I think sometimes it's a refocus you have to have. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. Because you get married and then the life comes at you and you got all sorts oh. of different stresses and life, you know, jobs and families and kids and all and this sex. stuff. And then, and and then oh, sex. absolutely. Yes, and exactly. Yeah. Oh, I can talk all day. I can talk. Resentment. All day. Yeah. I mean, freaking, <laughs> right. you know, so many things around that topic right. specifically, right. so many things around that. Oh, my gosh. And, um, yeah. I'm just curious if someone's sitting here today mm-hmm. and they haven't read the book, but you're kind of maybe intriguing them into the, mm-hmm. the book is what is something today that they can do? What is something today that well, a small step and they have this little thing and how can I make this better? How can I well, make I'm going to tell you my, you know, my Ted talk is coming up and everyone says to me, yeah, what's, your, excited. What's, your idea? what's your big idea? And I'll tell you, are you, how old are you, Travis? Can I ask you? I'm 38. Okay, so are you a millennial? Technically, no. I'm, a, I'm on the very edge. <laughs> You're on the very edge. Okay, so I really believe that millennials are totally doing things right. Oh, okay. Um, I do. I think you guys have got, you've got your shit together and people are like really hard on y'all and you're saying, you know, you guys are whatever and entitled, blah, blah. You guys are really good at one thing and what you've really done is you've actually lowered your, your um, I'm giving away my TED talk here, but your generation, um, you know, millennials have slowed things down um, mm. and taken relationships and dating more seriously. And you've, you've decided to choose your partners more carefully mm. um, lately. This, and so it's actually lowered the divorce rate in your generation, mm. um, which is really crazy, right? That's so, good news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know what else? This is the thing. So I really believe, and people always yell at me, and every time I public speak, I get these boos and news and whatever. And then everyone's like, thank God she said that. My biggest thing that I didn't do in my marriage was put my kids second. Oh, yes. I put my kids first. Right. Before my husband, right. because that's what I was taught in my generation. I'm 48. I was taught kids come first. Right. That is the biggest bunch of bullshit. Okay. Mm. Everyone's going to be calling you going, this girl's crazy, but I'm telling you, <laughs> if you put your kids first before your relationship, you will eventually end up divorced. Wow. I can promise you, you'll call me up in a year, two years, three years and say, oh my God, Jen, you were right. Wow. I, get, I get more messages and more emails from people who say, you saved my marriage. So what do they do to put themselves first then? What, you've got to put yourself, you've got to put your relationship first. You've got to say, you've got to have kidless conversations. Kidless you've conversations. got to have kidless vacations. Gotcha. You've got to have kidless sex. Yes, <laughs> and I mean that. I mean, that. <laughs> right? But I mean, I'm being crazy. Like I know people that still sleep with their kids in their bed. I know. Yes. Get those kids out of the bed. Right. Okay. That's a hard it, thing to do for a lot of people too. It it's is. A comfort zone. It's a, it's, it is. It's a comfort zone and the kids are used to being there and the kids are, you know what? Here's the thing. I was a... I'm telling you the truth. This is like true story. I was an amazing mom. I was the best mom. My husband was the best dad, Mm. but I was a shitty wife and he was a shitty husband. Uh. So people that read my book, they're like, oh my God, it's like eye opening, right? If you don't nurture your relationship with your spouse, you will end up divorced. You will. And your kids need to see you taking care of each other. Mm. Right, they need to see that loving relationship, and you need to have sex because that dopamine, dopamine, and that oxytocin and those cuddle hormones that are surging through your body make you happy. Oh yeah, 
right? I mean, don't Absolutely. you love that? Absolutely. Right, right. So I think guys like, have no problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> right. The guys, the guys are like, well, you know, getting them over the edge. Come on, honey. Exactly. What are we going to do to warm this thing up here? <laughs> right, right, right. But the problem with the guys is that the, so it's like a cyclical kind of elephant in the room. The girls don't, sometimes, sometimes women don't want to have it. They're tired, blah, blah, blah. And the guys Absolutely. feel rejected and then right. they don't want to try because they feel like they're not, they're not wanted. And the women don't, it's just a whole, oh God, that my clients. There's a, whole, just, there's a whole topic on that. I'm sure yes. there's, a whole, there's, there's a lot to cover in that. Yep. What do you do in the situation where you're just trying to say, hey, I want to get this thing a little more spiced up. I got a kid now and I want to make sure that, you know, I have some time for myself. What, what is, I got what lots. That? I got lots. You know what? One of my favorite things to do, and I tell my clients, and everyone still, they give me, they give me such crap about this, but I love it. I think that scheduling sex yeah. Um, and this is supposed to be fun. It's not like we're going to have sex, but, but it's a fun thing. It's a, it's a, you know, it's funny. Anticipation is an aphrodisiac, right? Mm. So when you send your wife a little text that says, you know, I can't wait to see you tonight. I can't wait to whatever. Or like I bought you a new song or you put a little note, whatever. She sends you like a sexy hot text at work. You know, you're getting some, right? Like Got so you. if you know that every Friday night you're going to have sex, Got right? You. That's kind of a turn on to know sure that like, okay, right? So like if you're not having, these are for people who are like struggling with the sexual relationship or struggling with intimacy. And look, I'm not saying that you have to have sex all the, but intimacy is important. Holding hands, yes. being together, talking, whatever it is. But if sex was off the table, right? Monday through Thursday, whatever. And you knew that you were only having sex every Friday night. Wouldn't that be kind of hot right. that you know that like it's coming that's and you don't have to worry about it, but you're going to shave and you're going to get ready and you're going to put a hot right. little whatever. That's kind of sexy, right? So I love that idea. People that's a very it. good idea. Yeah. People love so, it. But, and have that in your schedule too. Would you put that at like both of you guys have a calendar date? Yes, like it's yes. coming soon. It's coming soon. We're doing it. And, every, and you know what? Then you know that like you have a date night, right? And here's, here's another thing too. A date night means when you guys go out and you get a babysitter, it doesn't mean you go out and you talk about the kids. Right. Like my, my husband and I, we would go out and we'd have these great, I thought it was the best wife ever. We had these date nights and we'd sit and talk about my kids Yeah. or our jobs right. or the finances. I'm like, what the fuck? No, you guys want to go home and have sex after that? Nobody right. does. No, right? one. No, no, exactly. Especially you might get fired up. One person, I mean, hey, where are you spending that money? <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely not going to end up in, the, in that section. <laughs> no, exactly. Definitely not going to be getting that tonight. No worries. Exactly. No <laughs> one's going to be happy. You know, you're sending the babysitter home and you're going to watch TV, right? I mean, ah. so you just got to like, it, and it's hard. Trust me. I mean, stuff, life gets in the way of life. Of it course. really does. Of course. Um, but these are really good strategies. Yeah, I hope. Having yeah. something set in your schedule, folks. Having yeah. something set up. Yeah, yeah. So at and least so, you know, as a guy, once a week, we got this going. <laughs> that's it, right? And then you know what else it does? It alleviates the stress off the rest of the week. Right. Because I know as like as a woman, I'm like, oh my God, do I have to do it tonight? And mm -hmm. I'm in my bed and I'm like, oh, please don't touch me. I've been tired all day and the baby's been throwing up on me and I feel right. like crap, but I'm fat. Blah. Who cares? If you know that yeah. like, you know, but here's, here's my caveat. Here's my little rule that I play with my clients. Mm -hmm. If Friday night comes along and one of you cancels on the sex, you owe someone something else. Like you uh -huh. lose something, right? So let's say your thing is Game of Thrones or hers is a glass of wine every week. I'm just saying right. like you don't get that glass of wine and you don't get Game of Thrones if you don't put out. Uh, it makes you. it a fun little game, right? So all of a sudden it becomes like this like kind of cat and mouse kind of thing. Mm. So I don't know. That's fascinating. Well, it's I think it's very important. I think it's very important yeah, to have those yeah. elements in your life, as well as also to, as a new dad, you know, it's 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 difficult oh, for so anyone cool. that has it has it has a child. I mean, it's crazy. How old your baby? How old? She's coming up on one year. Oh my god! Congratulations. So amazing. Yes. It's, it's exciting, but it's that, hard, isn't it? It is. It really is. And and especially being a new parent, they don't give you. I mean, there's lots of no. guides and YouTube videos, <laughs> but it's like. When you're in the thick of things, it's all you, you know? I know, and, uh, I know. And one of the best things we did was we hired a sleep specialist to get our sleep right. So we got good. my daughter's sleep right where she's okay, good. on good. her own, 12 hours a night typically. Oh, good. Night, good. Uh, with a few structured naps. And so we do actually get quite a bit of time at night. You okay, know? good. Well, then so there that's you go. The, this, is the, this is the time. This is the time to roll out the, the, the Friday night special here. <laughs> I like this. I like this. I like I where we're going here. Yeah, but it shouldn't be stressful because a lot of sexologists right. that I work with and a lot of therapists are like, well, then sometimes people get stressed out because they can't perform. It's too much stress for them. Oh, I'm like, wow, it should okay. not be stressful. If it's stressful where like Friday night comes on and you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I have to, she can't get you know, aroused and you can't get turned on, then forget it. Don't do forget it. it. But like, this is, it's supposed to be fun. Nothing is, nothing in life should be like, too, especially in sex, too especially, stressful. Right. And right. also I think, like you said, it's something to look forward to. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'll it's an aphrodisiac. Clean up and kind of, you know, make sure everything's looking good. You got yeah. You know, feeling good. She exactly. She knows she doesn't have to shave the rest of the week. Yes. You know, fighting. She's like, great, because yes. she's tired. You have to remember she's a new mom. Right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you're Absolutely. tired too, right? So 100. Especially working with a woman that is a, a professional. That is. Right. Uh, for instance, my wife's a psychologist. So, oh, so she knows all this. Doctor, she knows all this shit. You know? She should be on the show. We should bring her on. The three, <laughs> we should have a little. I mean, she knows she's gonna go. You're gonna come. She's like, she. I know all this already, Travis. She already does. She yeah, already. She, but I think it's one of those things that even if you know it, it's harder to practice. Of you know? course. And so of course. It's, it's it's not that you don't have the juice or the knowledge in your brain. It's that practice and and yeah. and like you said, sometimes you can get caught up in general on just being a great parent. Yeah, and, because you, and that's not a bad thing. Yes. No, I mean, it's not a bad thing. Let's no, be no. good parents out there, but yes, yes, yes. But still, like, don't try not to sacrifice yourself and your right. relationship, right, for this new blessing that you have in your life. Because exactly. at some point, if you only put all your focus on them, they're going to, you know. And I always, my, some of my greatest friends say that too, as well. And we're working our way to that, I think, yep. where we have, you know, we have good sitters. Hopefully, we're going to get some date good, nights good, good. coming up. Yeah, yeah, I'm proud. That's uh, where, awesome. Where we get some yeah, alone I mean, I time. You, and- yeah, I can tell you, Travis, I went on a vacation once to Mexico, my first time ever away from my kids. And my mom was watching my, my boys. And I called the airline to try and get home early. I bet, yeah. Because I could not. I was so, like, so yeah. I get it, right? You're just like on edge, like hope everything goes right, well. You just right, want to be right, sure. right. Yeah. So I understand. And moms call me all the time and they're like, you know, Jen, that sounds so great. But when you're in the moment and I understand, but you need to really, really, really make time because I'm telling you, I'm, I'm like so far out of it and I'm looking back and I remember apologizing to Mark, my husband, like, I'm so sorry. Like I was... I always thought I could do it better or faster or the changing diaper was, I was just better at it or making food. I was better at it, but it was emasculating. Mm. I didn't realize what I was taking away from him. Right. So it's really important, I think. And that's why Oprah said, you know, when she picked the book for it's the top five best relationship book to read with your partner for a healthy marriage. Um, Yeah. Because I just kind of put it out there. I was like, look, you guys, you're, you got to like, it's just got to, something's got to change. You know, someone's got to, put your ego aside and kind of help each other. So, right. Yeah. Was that a cool experience for you when you had someone like Oprah? Oh, well, you know what? It wasn't technically Oprah. It was her, it was her, her, her editors. Yeah, her people, of course, right? of course. Of yeah. Course. It was but it's on her website. Let's yeah. It was the best day of my life. It was. <laughs> I can only imagine. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty cool. I was that has got to be very validating yeah, as an author on. to know that someone of that level is putting you on such a great list. Yeah. It was nuts. It was nuts. And you know, it's like in between two really uh, like amazing other, like five love languages is before, is after me, like before mm-hmm. me. And then um, another one, Toxic In-Laws. Like they, it was on a list with some really amazing like relationship the, books. Right. So to see mine there was just like, I don't know, just crazy. You know, you never think, well, you know, being in this business, you never think, you never think you're ever going to be validated like that. So it was really cool. Right. Yeah. Yeah. When you're not looking for it too, sometimes it just comes and hits you. Boom. Bam. Here we go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right when you're ready to quit. Like I'm ready to give up. I'm always at the point where like, "Ah, I'm not so sure about this anymore. Then something big happens. (laughs) I'm like, crap. Uh, (laughs) And it just completely validates everything you've been putting in for like the last 10 years. And you're like, oh God, I am on the right path here, folks. I guess this is okay, right? <laughs> and we shouldn't give up, folks. Right. I think that's one of the most important things in life is to yeah. not give up on your dreams, yeah. on your goals, on your podcast, on yes. your book, yeah. on anything. And well, uh, that leads me into to, to yeah. your show too. You're, you're a podcast host. I am. I am doing divorce right or okay, avoiding so it all together. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the show. Like what? What? Uh, you got to come on my show. Come on. I my know. Show. I would love to. I think I that's fabulous. You. Yeah. You know what? I just started the same thing. Um, I didn't even know what a podcast was. I had no mm-hmm. idea, and I went to some podcasting in um, LA and. I met a bunch of really cool people and I was actually pitching my book there because um, I didn't have a podcast and I stood up in front of everybody and pitching my book and blah, blah, blah. And this friend of mine, Steve Olsher, who was actually in charge of um, the new podcast magazine. Have you seen that coming out? No, podcast oh magazine. My gosh, you have to get on it. Well, like, well, you know, we'll make a connection. We'll get you there. He's working with David Meltzer and Todd and everybody. And um, Joe Rogan's on his first cover. It's podcast magazine. Oh, nice. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. So he said, well, Jen, why don't you, in front of everyone, he's like, you should do a podcast. And I'm like, he's like, well, I'm like, well, what would I, what would I possibly talk about? And he's like, well, what's your book about? I'm like doing divorce. Right. And he's like, there's oh, your name. And I was wow. like, Boom. yeah, I got the chills. And I was like, that's it. Wow. So yeah. And I the people to- you, that you, you bring on your show, what, what different types of people, different walks of everything. life or everything. everything. You know, what's so I'm- weird. I started out just doing divorce related stuff. And then people were like, my listeners became like really into like everything, like yes. you know, marriage and sex and relationships and, and empowerment and, you know, st- everything, everything. And I have, wow. I have people from all over everywhere. And um, yeah, it's just cool. It's just really cool. You know, 
That is it. cool. That is awesome. I I, and uh, and so how long have you been doing the show for then? Um, 18 months. 18 wow. Months. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, yeah. podcasting folks, as you guys know, you guys are listening to a podcast is the future. And so <laughs> it, is. it is the future. You're it listening is. on your favorite device. You're fi- living, listening on your, you know, mostly, mostly a lot of mobile devices or on your car, et cetera. And so it's just so convenient and easy it to is. get this hot sauce, get the knowledge and in your brain. I think that's the most important thing is that you're constantly like feeding yourself with new things. And because there's so many Let's just be real. There's just so many different points of view out there. I agree. That I think it's good to just kind of take in all the points of view, you know, and see what what to Travis, when you're driving, do you listen to podcasts? Because I sometimes run lights. I ran a red light the other day listening to <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, shit. And I wrote, I'm like, I can't focus on, I'm, I'm so like, I don't know if I can, I have to. <laughs> that, that my, yeah. Listen, you know what? You're right. You're, you know, you're absolutely right. I think because when you're like reading a book or anything like that, you can yeah. get lost into it. And you're probably the same in the podcast. Yeah, totally. Um, Be careful. I think the safest place to listen to a podcast is like on a walk or on the gym. Oh, yes. Or, I agree. You know, I agree. I'll listen to an audio book a lot of times or a podcast yeah. when I'm when I'm working. Yep. Yep. Uh, because obviously I'm working. I'm just grinding on my social game here. And uh, and then next thing you know, I'm I'm like, wow, I'm learning about like right now I'm listening to the Bob Iger's book about his yeah. journey at Disney. And just uh, it's fascinating. And personally, folks, if you don't like podcasting, you need to start your own podcast. Because oh my God, there's so many of them, right? I mean, everybody yes. has something to talk about, I feel like. Absolutely. Well, you've been doing this a long time, Travis. Your podcast, what are you, like 200 episodes or something? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yes. I mean, your podcast is rocking. Thank it's rocking. So. Thank you so Fabulous. much. Fabulous. It is, it is a, it, it's a blessing. You know, it is a blessing. I've, I never would have thought when I started I know, the show right? that I would have gone where we are now. I know, uh, right? Not that it's always like monetizing and you're making all this money from it, but more of like the people that got a chance to meet. Right, and also right. I would say the insights to my own life because I think one of the best things about a podcast is like literally a, you're meeting people in a conversation set where you might never, Jennifer might I never want to bump into T-Huff, you know? And, <laughs> and, and, I love and it. like, it's, it's probably just one of those things that like our paths might never have crossed had I not had the But it's crazy how it did, right? I mean, our connections 100%. and everything. Really 100%, cool. I'm glad to be. One, yeah, one million. Yeah. Well, uh, everybody that knows T Huff likes T Huff. So yeah, <laughs> I try. You know, I try. Yeah. So, so the the next uh, key question is is yeah. for busy folks. Oh. I'm sure you get this question a lot. Yeah, yeah. I'm too busy, Jennifer. I got a lot of things going on. I'm just. I got too many things in my fire. Yeah. How do you how do you break someone of this busy habit? Uh, you know what? Especially when I feel it's a like that's me. I feel like that's me. I said like, yeah. I'm so busy. I'm so busy. You know what? I feel like you have to prioritize. And I, you know, especially especially in a relationship where you might be on that fence of, you know, I, a lot of my clients now are that they're contemplating and look at here. I I gotta just give this caveat really quickly. I'm never saying ever, and this is my first chapter in my book, if you are in an emotionally or physically abusive relationship, you need to get out immediately. I'm yes. not saying in a marriage that is emotionally or physically abusive. But a lot of my clients come to me and they're like, Oh my God, you know, the garage door goes up at the end of the day and my heart doesn't flutter anymore and I don't really know. And I don't mm. know why, why, why listen, listen. Like if you're at that place where you're just contemplating you know, seven years, eight years, that's kind of the people I see. Um, they're like, I just don't know, Jen. I don't know. I'm supposed, I'm not in love anymore. I don't think I'm in love. Okay, really? Um, those are the kind of the clients that I need to say to them, look, it's time to prioritize. You know, busy is busy, but it's time to work on that relationship. Um, right. And wake up every day and choose the person you're with. And right. choose to show up every single day for that person. And it's hard work. It is mm. hard work, right? I mean. That's, that's the truth. But guess what? So is being in a, I mean, you can either choose to stay in a unhappy marriage and fix it or be in a divorce and try to be in a happy divorce. It's, it's I mean, pick it. It's going to yeah. be difficult either, either way. Either way, right? it's going to be tough. Right, right. So choose your, choose your poison. <laughs> so, right. You know? right. And I think so, a lot of the times it's just being happy. In what yeah. You have because I think a lot of times, especially obviously you see it with men. Yeah. Is it there? The grass is always greener somewhere oh, else. Oh my God. It's right. like, God, just, just focus on what you have, man. Because. And women too. I have a lot of girlfriends who are like, yes, yes. I have a lot of girlfriends who are like, you know, oh my God, if I could just date. And that was me. I thought to myself, like around year 10, I'm like, I just, you know what? I just don't, I need that spark. I need to date. It'll be great. Right. It it is such a shit show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it's awful. It's absolutely awful. That's a whole other podcast. We could talk about dating, my dating coaching life. I love it. (laughs) I set up people. It's my favorite thing to do as a dating coach. I love it. But it's it's hard. It's hard work. It's work. Yes. It's work all the way around. So it's like, 
okay, so if you aren't going to be in this, then you're going to be working to find something else. Right. And then if you're, right. and then either way, you're going to be working to also keep your, your, your past relationship right. at bay, if right. you have, especially if you have children. Yes. And so you're going to be at that person co-parenting and co-parenting is my jam. I was in um, Oprah quoted me for that too, but co-parenting is like, that's my, I, my kids are like, I'm, Mark and I, my husband, we're rock stars at co-parenting, but that's impossible if you don't have two people that are willing to do the work. Right. So, you know, it's like, that's a whole other podcast. It's just crazy. It's crazy. Divorce is crazy. So, yeah. and so, so that gives, uh, you know, you the motivation folks to, you know, find those little things that you can, you know, commonalities, you know, me and yeah. my wife have a little paint night we do. Oh, you do? Uh, I love that. Yes. Oh, it's fun. Oh, it's, I love that. And, and love we compete that. a little bit. My wife beats me every single time because the women are much better at art, I swear, because of makeup. Uh, <laughs> makeup. That's okay. That's okay. You know, I, I don't mind losing, but you know, it's, it's important that, that we've always found that sometimes it's hard to stay consistent with it because, yes. but, but, uh, you know, you got some things going on. I'm tired today. I want to watch a show. I want to watch some football or whatever. But when we get those paint nights going, it's just fun because oh, I love it's, that. It's, uh, it's a connection that you guys both have where you're not necessarily doing anything else. Right. And you're enjoying maybe a little alcoholic beverage or your favorite yeah, drink. For sure. Like. Bring in the wine. Yeah, bring, the bring wine. some wine. Right. Bring some of my White Claw for me. And, uh, and then, oh, my God. I love White Claws. <laughs> They are. They are good, folks. Good, uh, folks. And, uh, and at the end of the day, what I found is that just like after you're done, it feels good. Yeah, like after right. you're done, it feels good. To well, that's the endorphins that. and that's yeah. the oxytocin and the dopamine. And those are real hormones and people don't believe me, but they are. And then, you know, yes. you're, it's a stress reliever. Sex is a stress reliever. And that's oh, yeah. the truth. And even like holding hands or I mean, I'm, I'm fine with my people, my clients watching Netflix, picking a good show, sitting on the couch, but you have to be sitting next to each other right. and you have to be touching some part of your body. I don't care what it is. Oh, that's good. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Find a part and touch because my husband and I would, he'd be upstairs, I'd be downstairs and we would text each other. Right. Okay. Like and I'm sure that's so many digital, rela- I mean, so many relationships of now. Of course. <laughs> They're and like, I'm like stuck you know, on their feeds. Or exactly. Their- right. And that's just not okay. It's just yeah. not okay. Right. So if I can save a few marriages and lower this divorce rate, I would love it. And at the same time, if I can help families um, co-parent and, and, you know, be in a happy divorce, Transition, I'm, yes. I love that too. So well, either that's way. Bu- I- that's a blessing to be able to serve, you know, essentially everything. In I marriage. hope, I hope so. I would love it. You know, I love it. And people think, you know, I get a lot of shit because people are like, well, you're not supporting divorced women. I am supporting divorced women up and down the street. Right. Um, I'm here for everybody, but I do also support women who are struggling with their marriage. Right. So and men too. You know, I just I feel like it's just tough. It's really tough. So well, I give you a shout out for filling that gap, if you want to call it, or just providing the love and service and attention to this, because I think it's so important in this world to both have a peaceful, you know, uh, exit or a peaceful relationship beyond that, as well as obviously finding ways to keep things going, man. I mean, if you're if you're sitting there, folks, thinking about this, obviously you need to get check out one of her books. We'll definitely put that in the in the in the show notes. But beyond that, just think about the things she said about the Friday nights. You know about things you can do. I give you one right now, folks. A paint night. A you paint can do night. anything. You can do something fun. You can do something that has nothing to do with work, relationships, kids, etc. Something you can both learn at, get better at together. And at the end of the day, you find the common bond because you're doing it together and you're not on a phone, not on a social media, not on a computer, not on a a TV. Mm -hmm. And, and there's something about that in this world of just being together, present, doing something, nothing, nothing, you know, sidetracking each one of you, you know? And so, but now Jennifer, we're about to take you into our top 10. Are you ready? No, I don't know about the top 10. I'm nervous. Okay. Okay. We're bringing it. We're bringing it. We're bringing it real here. Yes. Okay. Apple or Android? Oh, Apple. Netflix or YouTube? Netflix. Instagram or Facebook? Oh, oh, I don't, Facebook, I'm old. Facebook. I'm old. And Facebook owns Instagram, so you're, okay, yeah, you're winning okay. both ways. Okay, chicken good. or okay. steak? Oh, chicken. Oh, sometimes steak, I don't know. That's a tough one. Chicken. It depends on the mood. It's exactly right. Laptop or a smartphone? Laptop. Spotify or Pandora? Oh, Spotify. Movies or video games? Movies. <laughs> They win. Reading books or <laughs> listening to books? Reading books. I like to touch them. <laughs> stocks. Oh, nice. That's a yeah, good one. Like stocks or real estate? Oh, stocks. Uh, oceans or lakes when you're going on a vacation? Oceans. I hate lakes. They creep me out. There's dead bodies in lakes. They do creep me out, huh? <laughs> I, one time I felt like a, some weird stuff one time. Yes, it's so gross. <laughs> I'm like, what I'm, the hell is this? It's like a dead body. and I yes. can't stand lakes. I don't know. Yes. What I'm but I grew I'm, up in Michigan, so I should like lakes. But you got the big lakes up there. I do, yeah. 
That's amazing. Those lakes are crazy. Are up they there. They're like almost like an ocean. They're gorgeous. I love Michigan. Yeah. When you wake up in the morning, you look at yourself in the mirror. Why do you love being you? Why do you love being Jennifer? Oh, that's a, that's a good one. I love being Jennifer. I, I, oh my God, that's a great one. I don't know. I, you know, I love, I, I, I just, I think life is, is, it's, I think it's good. I think it's, I think I love my, I love my kids. I love my kids. And I love mm. to show them that um, grit, I got grit and right. pers- perseverance and you can't quit and you got to show up. And um, my divorce showed me that I could do that. So if I can help other people, that's kind of, that's kind of what I like about me. I that's giving I'm, you your light. You're giving your, yeah. your you know, your, 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 your story has helped uh, so many other people. I hope so. Uh, Travis, you're awesome. This is a Absolutely. great show. I love you. I think this is great. Your wife is, uh, this is awesome. Good for you. I, I'm happy. Thank you. Thank you so much. Me. Absolutely. Where do you think you'll ever retire? Do you think you'll ever? Yeah, I will. I'm tired. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Let me just I, have a, I have a two TV shows that I'm, I'm working on and all this other stuff, but um, yeah, I hope, I hopefully, um, yeah. The TED Talk, we'll see after the TED Talk. We'll let you right. know. It's in April. It's in April. So. Got you. How do you typically start your day? Do you, have a, do you have a morning routine? Do you have a way of getting your day going? I don't. just jump up. I, you know, I, I kind of jump up out of bed and just, just start. I'm a morning Ooh. person. Yeah. Everyone's different on that. Yeah. You know? So it's so fascinating. I like that. Do you have a skill? We're coming on a new year. Do you have a skill that you want to master this year? 2020. Oh, gosh. A skill that I want to master. Oh, my gosh. I guess I want, is, is eating better a skill? Of course. Do you my body better? Of course. Yeah, I, I have Absolutely. to eat better. My eating sucks. Yeah. Is it hard? Is, well, it's hard because you're probably busy too. Yeah. You know what? I'm busy, but I just love, um, I don't eat all day. Like I like try to like, and then I just eat crap for dinner. I'm just a shit eater. I'm a shit eater. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, you know what? Part of the whole uh, journey in that is just being real with where you're at. Yeah. I'm just a shit eater. I it's easier. To, you know, my favorite thing to do folks is meal prep. And so I know that oh. that's, that's, a, that's a tough one because sometimes people are like, oh, I don't want to eat the same thing every day for this and that. Well, you only got to do meal prep for a couple of days. Yeah, you know, my boyfriend make, does that. He meal preps. You make a little healthy meal. And it, the cool part about it, Jennifer, is it really just makes it easy for you. Yeah, he does you know? it. He loves it. Well, he, yeah. does, he does crossfitting. Oh, crossfitting. yeah, yeah. So he knows yes. what's up. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And that's, me, I'm like, oh, no. That's the, and you know, food is an interesting thing because obviously the whole world has got issues with food because yep. look at Weight Watchers and look when yep. you go walk around at the grocery store and things like that, but it's a challenge and there's no right or wrong answer. You know, it's like, you know, there's no right or wrong answer nope. as far as I what just, you want to eat, where you want to eat, what you want to do. But you know, if, if you're not happy, I know one thing is that taking control. I know my journey was when I, when I was you know 300 plant pounds or so in high school, you were was, not. I was, yes. And I had said, I had to take control of my life because my mom, she loves to bake. She's, I bless her <gasps> I soul. Too. She's just trying to too. shove every damn brownie in my <laughs> throat. And I was like, you know, big at that time. And I was like, mom, I got to get, I got to figure different ways out. So I, I made those choices, you know? Yeah, so you yeah. make those choices of the things we put in our body, the activity we get. And there's no right or wrong answer, folks. Just remember that. Know that this, just take one step at a time. Take right. one meal at a time. Don't think you're going to change everything in one day. It's yep. all a little progression. For me, it's been 22 years of small steps every day. Do you, how do you feel about yeah. detox and all that? It's like detoxes and shakes and do you do you that? Know, I don't think any of that stuff's bad. I okay. think it's very tough to do detoxes um, yeah. for long periods. I yeah. know that um, what I will do is a Dr. Axe detox drink here and there throughout the okay. week, which is uh, simple stuff like apple cider vinegar, lemon, turmeric, uh, uh, ground ginger and, oh. and uh, Ceylon cinnamon. If you look at Dr. Axe, detox, okay. it's a good okay. one. It's not one of those things you're just going to live on though. You know, like these, yeah, no, all these no. drinks you're just drinking all day. I, I remember a long time ago, I did a lemon one and I was, Oh yeah. I remember that with the maple was, syrup. Oh my God. I was, was like, so gross. I was like, you know, the, the, the ocean was coming out of my buns. Folks. Yes. It was like crazy. <laughs> it was crazy what yeah, was going on. And that didn't necessarily help, you know, but so mm-hmm. I would, I would say, the, the two things that are for sure to help are this water, lots of water, as yeah. much water as you possibly can shove in your mouth and a protein shake. Because yeah, I do a protein shake every day. Yes. Protein shakes are so key folks because it, it helps you just get those extra, uh, that extra protein, which fills you up. And then the calories on those things are very low. There's low right. carbs and low, like even if you go to a protein bar, folks, I mean, I'm guilty of that. I love protein bars. But you look at the carbs, there's lots of carbs in there. There's, yeah. you know, 20, 30, 40 carbs where the protein shake has none, you know? And yeah. so that's the key is, is the carbs because from what I found is that, you know, the more carbs you're putting on, it's just so hard to get those suckers off. Oh and my so God, tell me. It is. It's just it's so, so hard. hard. It's so um, hard. 
But now to, I have a question for you. Say you're okay. going to be sitting down to a chicken dinner or a steak dinner oh, on your move with anyone in the world and they're coming to you. They're flying. Oh, to you. My Who God. would it be? Oh my God. Oh my God. Really? Yes. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let course. me think about it. This is a, this is a tough one. Cause I have so many people that I'm like really, really into right now that I like, uh, Oh God. Anyone. Anyone. Okay, so Oprah's coming here next weekend. Oh wow. Yeah, Oprah's coming here to speak in Charlotte and nice. I, don't have, I don't have tickets because I'm freaking out. They're so expensive. Um, I probably, find a way to get your tickets. I know. I don't know what to do. I thought I had tickets and then I, now I don't. Um, Oprah would probably be on my, like on my list. Um, Absolutely. I'm kind of really, um, slightly obsessed right now with like, I, I kind of love Adam Driver. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think he's phenomenal. Oh, um, yeah. I don't know. I, I love that guy. I, I, there's so many people that I would like to sit down with. I have so many, so many people in like, out, like the whole, I'm a big, you know, like film, um, TV person. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. That's a good one. That's that's really- you know what the funny thing about that is it's just there's, sometimes it peaks you like, like, oh man, there's a lot of people I'd like to meet. Yeah, I know, right? And now yeah. I'm going to get off the show with you and I'm going to like be done. And I'm going to be like, oh, I know I have to tell Travis now. I can think about it. Yeah, no, I don't know. There's lots of people. You know, I love Jennifer Aniston. She's like my Oh my, my favorite. God. Love. Love. She's amazing. And she's, does, she, does she not ever get young, uh, older or no, anything? I'm like, God, mean, how does your doesn't. skin stay so damn good? She's gorgeous. Well, she's got, you know, when you have that kind of money, you can really do anything you want, yeah. I think. Yes. You know? so she's got some high end skincare routine. Yeah, she's incredible. She has some high end stuff. She's got some stem cell therapies or whatever she's got. She's got the best of the best. Yeah, she's uh, gorgeous. Can you give us what? Is there a book that has changed your life or mindset in your, or, or plug your book? Oh my gosh, plug my book. My book. Oh my gosh. My book only, you know, it's funny. People say to me, you know, um, how did you write? How did I write really fast? I write really fast. Um, mm-hmm. So I have next, my next book coming out this summer. I oh, can't nice. Believe, how exciting. Yeah, I can't believe I'm writing another book. Um, but as far as reading, I, I don't really, lately, I haven't, I don't have time to read as much as I would like to. Mm-hmm. Um, I read a great podcast book. Um, oh yeah. What was that? Yeah. By, um, oh shoot. Now I can't remember. Um, Meisner. My, um, what's her last name? It's called, if you wanted to start a, pod, a podcast, the only reason I was reading it is because helping a friend start hers and, um, oh gosh, what's her name? I can't think of it now. Meisner is her last name. Um, we'll look it up. We'll look, we'll look it, it up. up. Anyway, she's amazing. Um, I know Michelle Obama's book was amazing. I love anything Brene Brown, which is so like, oh yeah, she's, she's amazing. She's amazing. Um, yeah, you know, I I haven't read a lot lately. I've been so busy. Well, so, that's part of life too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's only How so much you? you can do. Yeah, you know, I love all sorts of books right now. Um, Lifespan is the one I'm reading. It's all oh. about like lit, like that we basically don't have to die. And it's oh my God. fascinating. David Sinclair is the name. Uh, oh, I like David Sinclair. He's he's, he's at the top of his game in Harvard. Yes. You know, top yes. top top top, and uh, just fascinating. Like that that uh, there's some stuff out there folks if we you know eat your veggies keep your seatbelt on things like that we might be living a whole lot longer than we expected and which so is why just, you have to get along with your partner that too otherwise you know you yeah. might end up uh, being thrown off the bridge or something like that <laughs> my wife always says you better be good you better be good I'm not gonna get the second kid so you know what at the end of the day folks it's 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 very true it's very yep. true. But I just want to first off uh, and thank you so much oh, for your time so today, Jennifer. Welcome. You you're have so- a great energy vibe. You too. I think that you're pr- providing such a valid service of need in this thank world you. of uh, chaos, if you want to call it, and so many different options and things in the world that we live in, you know, oh. uh, keeping grounded and focused at the simplest things, which are the Friday nights, folks. We talked about the it. Just the simple things to keep things, you know, going in your relationship as well, you know, are so vital. And uh, yeah. I just think that there's going to be lots and lots of great things coming for you from your Aww, books, Travis, for the you. people you help, the You're impact so that you have. Uh, so we just want to say thank you so much for being on the show today. If you could give our listeners one last real talk thought, what would that be? You know what? I think just be a, be a good human and be mm-hmm. kind. And um, I always tell people it's not about finding the right partner. It's about being the right partner. Ooh, that's a good yeah. one. Yeah. And where's the best place for your people to find you? Oh, I'm easy. It's well, I'm not easy, but it's easy to find me. Uh, <laughs> www.jenniferherbits.com. And it's Jennifer Herbits Biz all over the internet. So, oh, nice. Yeah. Well, folks, you've been hanging out with Jennifer Herbits. Thanks, Travis. Travis Tutal and Huff. I want to thank you again for your time today. And let's keep being real. This podcast is proudly sponsored by Real Time Reputation. Do you have results and reputation that you need to uncover and find out in your business? Do you need more reviews and positive reviews to be showcased on your website? Well, now's the time. 
check out real time reputation on Google and let's get going. What another epic episode. And uh, if you enjoyed the episode today, can you please do me a favor and subscribe to our podcast, The Be Real Show, on iTunes or your favorite podcast platform. And also take a little time today, if you don't mind, and give your boy T. Huff a review. I would really super appreciate it. And thank you so much for listening today.